Empire. NIL isn't just pay for play. You know, sometimes we'll get involved and help them if needed. And then we have this great scheduling feature that allows them to, you know, list the times that they're available. Um, and then parents are able to come onto the site, create an account, browse these college athletes, and then book and pay for a lesson in just a few clicks. That's Patrick Johnson, CEO and founder of Vantage Sports, where NIL can also mean mentorship and community building. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. There's a wild west in marketing and collegiate sports as leagues and programs understand and leverage name, image, and likeness. For Patrick Johnson, he saw an opportunity to not only put money in athletes' pockets, but get a return that redefines influencer. Our guest this week is Patrick Johnson. He's the CEO and the founder of Vantage Sports, who are jumping back into the NIL markets with some interesting opportunities for young players in the marketplace to meet up with some of their collegiate stars in their communities. Hey, Patrick, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hey, Bram. Doing well. Thanks for having me on. Nice to meet you. Okay. Tell me a little bit about Vantage Sports. Uh, Why did you found this company? Yeah, absolutely. So we started Vantage Sports really because we thought there was an unmet need in this new NIL market for both college athletes who wanted to make some money and didn't have the social media prowess or following to necessarily, you know, get connected to brands for sponsorship deals, as well as we saw this opportunity to connect local youth and high school athletes with their favorite college athletes for private coaching and mentorship opportunities. So, you know, we we got the company off the ground um, about a year ago you know, a couple months into NIL and started to see that there really was opportunity on both sides for, you know, basically connecting college athletes with youth and high school athletes in their community. So you saw this as an opportunity for mentor mentorship and coaching. Is that, is that correct? How you're kind of viewing this? That's correct. So if you're a college baseball player, you know, you're offering pitching lessons. And if you're a local high school player, you can connect with, one of these college players to go get a 60 minute baseball lesson um, or go to a, you know, a baseball camp. And, you know, it's really about this live in-person training that we see, um, you know, a great opportunity to build on. Okay. So why, how did the idea come to you to kind of twist NIL and use it this way? Yeah. I mean, I was just reading all these articles about NIL and I sort of had this light bulb moment where, I thought all this energy and resources would go towards really the top one to 2% of college athletes knowing that, you know, in college sports, there there is a lot of money and interest in basketball and football and sort of an, I think an unmet opportunity with, you know, all the almost half a million other college athletes out there to connect them to, you know, the millions of high school athletes and even youth athletes who want to, you know, eventually play at the college level. So that's, that's really where the idea came. I grew up in New Jersey. I was a, a football and lacrosse player. I know I could have used sort of this type of mentorship and coaching along the way. And then, um, you know, so I sort of understood the, the need and opportunity from the, the high school and youth sports side. Okay. Um, but tell me a little bit about the coordination of this. I love the idea. Um, it makes a tremendous amount of sense. Seems like though there's a lot of coordination that's going to need to take place because you're matching athletes who do want the mentorship and the coaching with the collegiate athletes at the same time, they have to follow through and, and do these coaching lessons or mentor these kids. Like how how do you kind of view that moving forward? Yeah. So, I mean, Luckily, we've we continued to build and improve on our technology. Um, it's a website, AdvantageSports.com. It handles a lot of the logistics in terms of it. You know, it gives us great platform for these college athletes to create a profile, um, list the description of what type of coaching they're going to be offering, as well as the price and the location. Um, typically, the ones finding and setting the location, you know, sometimes we'll get involved and help them if needed. And then we have this great scheduling feature that allows them to, you know, list the times that they're available. Um, and then parents are able to come onto the site, create an account, 
browse these college athletes and then book and pay for a lesson in just a few clicks. Post lesson, yes, we follow up. We make sure everything worked from both sides of the marketplace. Um, you know, pay out the college athletes and then really ask the parents to give reviews and rating, which which I think is what really makes this work. College athletes, huh. not only do they show up, do they provide a great experience? Um, and, you know, parents are able to, to sort of help validate them and help them build. And that's what we've seen been really successful. I mean, our average rating is 4.97 out of 5. So these parents are definitely finding these experiences valuable. And then that's helping these college athletes continue to build their uh, their book of business, so to speak. Are you working directly with the athletic departments or the coaches um, at these schools as well to try to either help the athletes coordinate this or work directly with the schools if this is maybe a bigger idea that they would be interested in? So we have relationships with a few universities, um, but really we've gone right to the college athletes. Um, you know, one, one of my teammates was a former college athlete, so he had a network for us to start, and then we've been able to sort of just grow through social media and word of mouth. Um, we were also partnered um, with influencers, so we're in their global exchange, so we get really great access to these college athletes directly through that partnership, which has allowed us to acquire a good amount of college athletes and really focus on the product and sort of you know, finding the demand for their, for their sessions. This episode is brought to you by Chalk and Dog, which brings together the vast experience and expertise of two of the brightest agencies in media, sports, wagering, and gaming. With deep roots in the UK and the US, the agency offers expert guidance in everything from market entry to market expansion for startups as well as established global brands powered by best-in-class communication and creative experts. Chalk and Dog has vast international experience and delivers results-oriented, tailor-made solutions for B2B and B2C organizations. On the other side of this, and I, I ask that mainly, not only because they, they might be interested in it, but it feels like it could be a recruiting tool for them if they were to have their players involved with prospective future athletes in their programs. Yeah, it's a, it's a concept that a couple people have brought up as well, and I think it does potentially bring um, a good connection between these high school players and these college players. They can get a feel for what the players are like. And I think with that, they get an understanding uh, of what the coaching is like. You know, if you're working with a USF baseball player, you know, you're obviously there getting a lesson, but there's, I think there's a lot of other conversations that happen that can be super valuable from, from both sides, from the players seeing like, does this seem like someone who would fit in the program and from the the high school player saying like, does this seem like a program that I would want to be in based on my interactions with this player, sort of what he has to say about the coaching and whatnot. Um, all right. So I want to go back to something you talked about earlier, which is the idea of NIL being democratized a little bit and opportunity being out there for the majority of the athletes. Arch Manning goes to Texas. He's going to get a lot of money from advertisers the football players who play at Alabama or the kids who are up for the Heisman Trophy or the kids who are going to be high draft picks in the NBA, they'll be taken care of through marketing dollars. The vast majority won't. Um, as you kind of have surveyed this and looked at this, how do you kind of see the maturation of NIL and where programs like yours fit into all of that? Yeah, I mean, I think you you made a great point with the Arch Manning thing. I mean, that's what people think of when they think of NIL and it you know, rightfully so, because from a strictly dollar perspective, you know, that's where a lot of the, the big money is going. But I, I see really um, a lot of opportunity for us to help other college athletes. When I say other, you know, the hundreds of thousands of college athletes that are either in school, not in a revenue sport, um, at the D2, D3 or JUCO level, who still want to get involved as well. And I think there's a lot of excitement and energy around NIL still from the from the college students' perspective, you know, even though it's now over a year old. Um, and I, I think, like, opportunities like ours, as we grow, can hopefully touch, you know, a, a larger percent of these college athletes, even if it's not, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It can still be some meaningful meaningful and much-needed income for them. Um, and, and for you, like, obviously, there's a community-based aspect to this, Um why? Why was that important to you to try to build something that would be able to give back to communities through these types of deals? Yeah, I just thought there was a, a need and opportunity in a lot of these areas where there is a loyal fan base for these colleges, but 
you know, often the only interaction was going to the games, maybe getting an autograph after the game, and then going to these, you know, 300 person camps that they had every summer. And I thought that there was an opportunity to sort of further bridge that gap where you can now meet with and, you know, learn from these players one on one or in a small group setting. And, you know, had known that there's already sort of a, a validation for that in terms of, you know, how successful these programs are at getting, you know, young players to come out to their events, whether that be, you know, games or camps. And, you know, felt like we could use an IL to sort of further, further bridge that gap. Okay. Uh, very cool. Patrick Johnson is the CEO and the founder of Vantage Sports. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Bram. It's a pleasure. On the next Future Sport Podcast, peer-to-peer gaming and gambling goes next level like betting on anything. On our platform, you know, uh, I'll challenge you for our late night pizza. And the winner actually maybe gets the late night pizza delivered to their apartment. And that's really important for us when we talk to casual fans. A lot of them have a stigma against dollars. So all of a sudden you bring in uh, a pizza. I'm like, yeah, I'll put a pizza on. I'm going to eat the pizza anyway. That's Dylan Robbins, CEO of Lucra Sports, where friendly competition turns into a business model. That will do it for this episode. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Graham Weinstein.